Hello everybody, it's Amy from Winterwood Studio and today we're going to talk about 15 ways that you can earn a full-time income as an artist now in 2023. <laughs> or, you know, 2024 because we're closing in on the end of 2023. Um, I've done all 15 of these ways except for 3 and 6, uh, which I'm working on. <laughs> so grab yourself something to drink and come on in and let's chat for a little bit. <laughs> Um, so, this video was inspired by a viewer. <laughs> I had a, a, a woman who was adamant on my, I did a video on the worst art advice. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it down below. Uh, and she left a comment, like, she was adamant that you cannot make a, a living as an artist <laughs> now in 2023. And she said I was giving young people who are out of college false hope. Um, and we went back and forth a few times and I started to type out all the ways that you can earn money with your art. Uh, but then I decided, hey, let's just make it a video so everybody can go through all the ways to make a living with your art. I fully believe that you are totally capable of making a living with your art um, if you're willing to put in the work. Uh, I'm already, I started my channel here in on January 15th of 2023. It is October... 17th of 2023 and I'm already at a like a um, part-time job level of income um, if there's any interest in like having an income breakdown I could do that uh, I've gone back and forth on whether to be like I don't want my channel just to be about like money I really want it to be about the art but I also know that a lot of people who watch this are artists who are trying to make a living and maybe are curious about how much I'm making and from which income streams I'm making the money so if there's any interest in like a breakdown video like that let me know um, down in the comments and maybe I could go into something like that yeah so that's that's I'm like I said January to October already at a at a part-time income level um, it's a lot of work I'm not gonna lie it is I'm working full-time <laughs> um, so you know I'm working full-time but I'm able to work at home and be with my kids when they need me and do what I love so it is definitely worth it if you're willing to put in the time so before we get into the 15 ways to make an income as an artist there's a step a <laughs> And that is you have to build a platform for yourself. I don't care which one you pick. You can pick TikTok, you can pick YouTube, you can pick Instagram, you can pick some crazy one I haven't heard about yet, Facebook, I don't know. You have to pick one and you have to focus on it and build up a platform. So that means you're going to have to consistently post or whatever and put the work in to build in, build up something of a following and get some momentum going. All of these ways to earn income do rely on the fact that you have some sort of social media platform. I think that it would be extremely hard for any artist in 2023 and beyond to make a living unless they have some sort of platform base already built in. It's the world we live in. So do that, do step A, and then let's move on. <laughs> okay, so I have my notes here just so I don't forget anything and we go in order. Uh, like I said, three and six, I'm working on everything else I've done and I'm actively earning income from. So let's get started. Number one is to sell your original artwork. And this, when most people think of making a living as an artist, that's what people think of, selling your original artwork. The, the thing is that things have changed. Most artists I know that are making a living aren't making it from selling their original art. That's like, you know, the frosting on the cake. Um, or the gravy on the pot roast, whatever, whatever you want. That, that is not how they're making most of their money in you know the 19 whatever's 1800s that is how they would have made most of their money and they would have gone their traditional route and been in a gallery and the gallery would have sold their original works and blah 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 I don't know anybody who's making their living solely from that or even most of their living from that and I think that's what she was thinking um I can't remember her name I can't remember if it was Susan or Diane or Elena I, <laughs> I'm bad with names uh she knows who she is um, you, you know, we were talking about it. So um, that is, you know, the way most people think of, but I don't know a lot of people who are actually making their living doing that. So let's move on. Number two is to sell prints of your work. Now, I do know more artists who are making the majority of their income from selling prints of their, of their work. You can um, have someone print it for you or, and I think this is the more economical way, 
if you have the money, you can buy yourself an art printer and do the prints yourself, which is the way that I have gone. Um, art printers are expensive. I think mine was $600 on a Black Friday deal. I have the Canon Pixima Pro 200. Um, I will tell you in a little bit how I afforded that. That would be way number 15. I'll tell you how I afforded that printer on way number 15. So we'll come back to that. Number three is to license your artwork. You can do this on your own or you can try to get a licensing agent. I know a lot of artists who are making money having their artwork licensed and put on things like, you know, greeting cards, puzzles, mugs, throws. Um, if you can get a licensing deal, then you get royalties whenever they use your artwork on products. And that can be a nice steady income that is coming in on the side. Um, so I would recommend doing that. And that is number three. That's the, one of the ones I'm working on. Uh, you can query licensing agents, which is what I'm, I just sent out my first batch of queries yesterday. Uh, if you would like a video on that, let me know. I can do that as well. I don't know if people are interested in that, so I don't want to waste the time making that video if nobody wants to see it. Let me know in the comments if you want to know how to license or how to query licensing agents or if you want to know how to query illustrate, illustration agents because it's basically the same thing. Um, and then we'll move on to number four. You can sell digital downloads and most people would think digital downloads of prints of my work and that's true, but think about it if you're an artist you probably have some ex expertise in something, right? So a, a way to make some money with digital downloads other than selling digital downloads of your prints, which I haven't done yet and I don't really wanna do because I can't control how somebody's printer may print out that artwork down the road and I don't want like substandard, you know, quality art prints of mine floating around. Um, although that's what you can do that. A lot of people make a lot of money doing that. Um, but the way that I make money with my digital downloads is by selling my expertise. So I have one out. I don't think I have my copy here anymore. I have one out right now that is um, my secret sauce guide to setting up your own art shop and like all the materials you need down to like what sticker paper I recommend, um, what printers I use, uh, what websites I use, um, what what paper I use for my art prints, like everything you could need to set up your own art shop. I bundled that into a PDF. I wrote it up. Um, I like included photos and little blurbs. I even included the settings I put my printers on. Um, and I'm selling that for $4.99 over on my website. If you want it, the link will be down below. Um, am I making a ton of money from it? No, but it is another income stream that is bringing in a steady, slow trickle. And the key to the game to make it a full-time income as an artist is to have multiple income streams. You have to have more than one. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, before I was doing this, I was a jeweler and I had all my eggs in the Etsy basket and things imploded horribly for me and I lost my job last October <laughs> uh, because of what happened on Etsy. If you're interested in that video, I'll link that below too. It's a pretty sad story. Um, yeah, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You need to have a bunch of multiple income streams as an artist, okay? <laughs> Don't do what I did. Just do what I tell you to, not what I actually did. <laughs> um, yeah, where, what are we on? Oh, five, teach an in-person art class. If you live in a community, we all live in a community, that didn't make sense. <laughs> Probably there's somebody looking for someone who would want to teach an art, art class. Maybe it's like a summer library program. Maybe it is like your arts council. Some, some places have an arts council and they do like an art in the park demonstration. Um, maybe it is your school, your local school. There are often places where you can teach an in-person class and get paid for it. <laughs> Um, you can also set up your own in-person class and just like run ads or something on Facebook or Instagram um, and set up a class that way. Um, number six, you can put together an online course um, and this could be Skillshare or it could just be on your own. This is one of the ones that I'm working on. Um, so I, I haven't done Skillshare. Um, I honestly, it's, it's a little pricey. I don't have the money to do that right now, but I have taken over the last five years, a bunch of online classes sold individually by artists. I've taken classes from Andrew Tischler, um, The Paint Coach, uh, Sandy Hester, 
Barbara Jenicky. I'm not sure if she's saying if I'm saying that right. She is a gorgeous pastel and oil painter artist. Um, I love her class. I love it. That I highly recommend that one, especially if you're trying to paint in the impressionistic style. Um, who else have I taken classes from? Um, Lane Johnson. Uh, he's a really realist oil painter. Um, that's all I can remember off the top of my head right now. But all of those classes I've loved, all of them get an A plus for me, all of them I've learned something from, um, and they are making money on those classes. Some of them were not very cheap. <laughs> uh, but if they have an expertise and you want to learn that, then they have a way, way to sell that, uh, a way to sell that class. Okay, number seven is make stationery and or other products from your art and sell them. And this goes along with open your own shop. Uh, which I just did in September. I launched my shop. I started smallish. I have washi tape and pins which I had manufactured with my art. I can pop some pictures of those up here while I'm talking. Um, I also did uh, art prints and um, oh stickers. I have stickers of my artwork, both sticker sheets and like waterproof vinyl stickers. Um, and that's what I started with. I'm hoping to do more stuff as I grow, but that's what I started with. And it is again, am I making a ton of money? No. Is it a nice steady income? Yes, it is. The more income streams you have, the more they add up. If you want to check out my shop, that'll be linked down below. There's going to be so many links, you guys. Um, this is a very informative video. I hope you're enjoying it. It's probably going to take more time to do the links than it is to film the video. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, if you're enjoying it, why don't you hit the thumbs up? Give me a like. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. <laughs> um, eight. This goes back to having a platform. Um, and I'm specifically, specifically going to say, stay, oh, I'm tired. I'm specifically going to say start a YouTube channel. Out of all the platforms that there are, uh, I would say that the one that would most be able to provide you with an income is YouTube. YouTube's um, ad revenue is a great way to earn an, an income. Um, it is the most lucrative of all the platforms as far as I'm aware um, with the ability to make you the most amount of money. So that brings me, so once you have a YouTube channel, and you're monetized, that's going to take me to way number nine, which is sponsorships. I'm sure there's sponsorships over on like Instagram and TikTok and stuff too. Um, I'm going the YouTube route, so my point of view is from YouTube. Um, but I was starting to get people wanting to sponsor videos when I had only like five, 600 subscribers. Like before I was even monetized on YouTube, I had people wanting to sponsor videos. And now <clears throat> eight months, nine months, eight months, eight and a half months in, I am able to pick and choose. I've raised my rates a little bit with the sponsorships. Um, most of my videos at this point could be sponsored if I wanted to take on everything that comes to me. Uh, <laughs> they're not all stuff that I would do. Like why would I be sponsored by a purse company? <laughs> I mean, if I could figure out a way to fi fit it in, but like you'll have people like throwing sponsorships at you basically, and you have to pick and choose what you want to do. Um, most of my income so far comes from sponsorships. So that is by far the biggest percentage of my income. Um, and I think that if you want sponsorships, I think the easiest way to get them is to have a YouTube channel. I think people like sponsoring YouTube content. So um, and then also I get lots of free art supplies to try, which is fun too, although not technically income. So, um, and then that takes me to my other biggest income stream, which is my Patreon. Um, I have a side note for, for the lady I was talking to. Uh, I can't remember her name. Like I said, Susan, D Diane, uh, in her comments, she told me that she couldn't count Patreon as an income because, uh, that was just people giving me money as like, charity. Just to be clear, I do more work for my Patreon in a month by far than I do for anything else. More for the, more than I would for like a sponsored video, more than I would for YouTube, more than I would for um, like my shop. The, the time commitment to Patreon is pretty big. Um, I'm sure she didn't mean it the way it sounded. Like she probably doesn't know what Patreon is. Uh, but the the videos and the posts and the the content that I have to make just for that platform is is a lot. <laughs> but on the other hand, Patreon is 
a very steady form of income. It might go up and down a little bit each month, um, which is totally fine, but it stays fairly steady. Whereas some of the other income streams, like you can't control if someone's going to reach out to you and want to sponsor a video that month. Um, whereas the Patreon, as long as you put the work in and you're there for your patrons, it's a steady stream of income. So I would definitely recommend starting a Patreon if you don't already. Number 11 is affiliate links. I am an affiliate partner with both Amazon and Blick Art Materials. That means that when I have the links down below, if somebody likes the paint I'm using that day and they click it and it takes them to their site and they buy it, I get a very small percentage of the price of what they purchase. It doesn't cost whoever clicked on the link anymore. It's the same price as it would be. It just is like a very small um, like payment from Amazon or Blick or whoever's your affiliate for saying thank you for sending this person to our site and for having them purchase something you used. Um, again, this is a small uh, income stream. Um, it's probably my smallest income stream, um, but it is a small income that adds up and everything put together adds up. Um, is it a lot of work to keep all these balls in the air and juggle them all? Yes, it is, but so is any job, right? Okay, so today's video, you guys, is sponsored by me. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the changes I'm making over on my Patreon. Um, I think I've got 84 patrons at this point, um, and I have always, since I started it in April, only had the one level, the one tier, which was the $4 a month sketchbook club, um, and that tier is still staying the same. Nothing is changing there. I'm just adding in two more tiers. Um, so sketchbook club, $4 a month, that is the monthly sketchbook th theme plus the three weekly prompts and copyright free reference photos that I find on places like Unsplash to help you be inspired. Um, and then we also have the Facebook group and the Discord group and also I'm working on setting up the Patreon chat um, so people can have a conversation right on Patreon. It's a new feature they just introduced it. Um, and we also have the Google Photo Albums where you post what you make with your art. And I do a $15 e-gift card art supply card from either Jerry's or Blix that I give away at the end of the month. Um, so that Sketchbook Club, that is staying the same. I'm adding in a $8.50 tier and that is called the Student Artist. And that is going to be like the video level tier. And we will do an exclusive video every month over on Patreon. My videos run a little long. They can be like three, 30 minutes to three hours, <laughs> depending on what it is. Um, it could be a tutorial. It could be an exclusive like lesson on how to use your materials, maybe like if that month's theme is gouache, maybe we would be working in gouache. Um, it could be uh, like a step-by-step -step drawing tutorial. I'm going to change it up each month so it's fun and fresh and exciting. Um, and I think I'm also going to offer for that tier um, two free digital wallpapers uh, for your phone that I'm going to design and put up for you guys each month. Uh, plus you get all the all the benefits of the tiers below. <laughs> and then the other tier is $13.50 a month, and that is my apprentice artist tier. And that one, the main big new benefit is going to be that we will have a live Zoom call at least once a month. We're going to start with one th once a month. I'd ultimately like to get up to once a week, but we'll see how it goes. Um, once a month where we can work on something together or sketch together, or we could have a Q&A, um, or like if you want me to demonstrate certain techniques with the material, like quash and ask questions while I do it. Um, yeah, that's what the what the Zoom calls will be like, um, and that will also change up each month. I'm also thinking of maybe doing something fun, like a like maybe like a countdown to the holidays, uh, like an Advent thing over there um, for the higher tiers. Maybe where I give you guys a little goodie every other day. Um, more on that later because it's still October so and I have to see how burnt I am burnt out I am at the end of Paintober so okay so that's my little sponsored spiel and now let's get right into the video okay number 12 is to work as a freelancer so you can work as an illustrator and I don't just mean children's books although that is a viable option um, but places like magazines they require illustrations Things you wouldn't think of like Google or Adobe or Nike, they all need illustrations sometimes and they will work with freelancers. Obviously you have to be pretty high up for them to work with you. Um, but you can start out small on a place like Fiverr, which if you haven't heard about it, it's a place where you freelancers like put up their portfolio and say what they'll do and how much they'll charge and people looking for someone to do a job will go over there and hire you. I'll put the link to there down below. I have not set up a Fiverr 
account yet. I've thought about it. I may still do it. I haven't done it yet. I'm pretty busy with the YouTube right now. Um, but I think that is a very viable way to make some income there as well and also get some credentials as a freelance illustrator. And when I say illustration, like it, in fact, I just got this book. Uh, this is Drawing for Illustration by Martin Salisbury. I literally it just came yesterday. I've looked through it a little bit. Um, but so just to show you what I mean, the chapters start um, like drawing an illustration, the basics, blah, blah, blah. But then it goes on to, um, is this the one? Like there's like magazine editorials and authorial graphic storytelling. And it, it, it talks about different, um, different places where illustrations are used. It is not just children's illustrations. Um, they're used everywhere. Number 13 is to do commissions. So when you have like your Instagram up and running and people are commenting on how they like your art, then over on your bio, you put open for commissions and people will hire you to like, if you're doing like illustrations of couples, then like maybe somebody who wants to have a unique wedding uh, present might hire you to do an illustration of a couple or pet portraits or just whatever. When you open to commissions, that is another nice form of income that you can add to your income basket eggs. <laughs> Number 14, do art fairs. Okay, I'm gonna say these aren't for everybody. Uh, I did one. They're really tiring. I did one a few a few years ago and it is it's it's a lot of work. Um, and there's some overhead involved, like you usually have to pay for your table or your booth or whatever, and then you have to set up and you have to be there all day um, for a, an introvert like me. It was a little rough, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, there's a lot of sun coming in here. What is over here? Why is that so bright? Boy, that's bright. You guys, I just realized there was like a weird glare coming from over there off my white drawers where I store my gouache. Sorry about that. I probably can't do anything about it. This is one of those weeks where I have to film the video and get it up and get going. So, um, where was I? Art fairs. Oh yeah, art fairs. Not for everybody. A lot of work. There's usually overhead, but you can make a nice chunk of change. Um, especially like conventions, uh, you can make a nice chunk of change. Like maybe, I know some people who do like, uh, like the, not Comic Con, because that's the big one, but like smaller versions and they'll earn like their whole year's income in that one convention and then they can just you know do what they want to do for the rest of the year which sounds awesome but it is a lot of work so be aware of that and then number 15 is apply for art grants and people that no this is not like a continuing source of income but if you apply some of them are pretty big I have won a fairly large art grant um, it was a small business art grant given away by my state uh, back in I think 2019 um, and it was to specifically provide like tech for small businesses and small art businesses and and uh, self-employed people to get up off the ground and running um, it bought my fine art printer the camera I'm filming on uh, and my laptop so you have to be aware of like these art grants and opportunities check at your state level stack check at like governmental levels governmental I think that's right. Um, there will often be advertisements for art grants in the back of art magazines, um, like the Pastel Journal or the Artists Magazine or Watercolor Artists um, are some of the ones that I read. Um, yeah, it pays to be in the loop and it pays to apply to art grants because you never know when you're gonna get one. So those are my 15 ways to make an income as an artist and it can be done, I promise you, Susan or Diane or whatever your name was. Um, I am not giving false hope to young people. If you're willing to put in the work, you can totally do it. I'm doing it. Like I said, <laughs> eight months in and I'm already at like a part-time job level. Again, if anybody's really interested in like the breakdown of what I'm earning from what, I could do maybe like a yearly video or like quarterly or something like that. I don't want this channel to be all about money, but I do also want to help you grow your career. So if you're interested in that, leave that in the comment below. All right, you guys, I hope you had a great time. Thank you for being here with me, whether you're here on my YouTube or supporting me over on my Patreon. Um, all of it counts and all of it is valid. And I thank you all of you from the bottom of my heart for being here and helping make my business a success so far and helping it grow. Until next time, happy creating. Mm -hmm.